Welcome Anatomy 41 students. This is workshop number four, the generation of an action potential. And an action potential refers to the depolarization of an axon in a neuron, which is one of your nerve cells. And generating this action potential will mean that an electrical signal of a stimulus is being passed down that axon. So we're gonna look at an action potential, what this graph means and what it's referring to. So by the end of this activity, activity, you should be able to understand the stages of an action potential. You should be able to describe the movement of sodium and potassium ions during um, an activity that we'll talk about briefly here, but you'll also perform in a live Zoom setting and you'll explain um, features of a typical neural cell. What do a puffer fish, which is this guy right here, he's puffing himself out, and a black mamba snake have in common? and we will find out by the end of this activity. All right, so what type of tissue is considered, let me move my screen out of the way so I can see this, what type of tissue undergoes action potential? So nervous system tissue will undergo action potential and specifically we're talking about um, the area of the axon undergoing an action potential. And this just means when the neuron cell is stimulated, by some sort of electrical signal, that electrical signal will get past um, a certain threshold to undergo an action potential throughout the entire length of this axon. So nerve and muscles will both go through action potential. If we look at the structure of a typical neuron, just to review some of the anatomy first, these are dendrites of the neuron. They will receive signals from other neurons and pass them on to the cell body. The cell body will integrate those signals, process them, and send, then further send them out down the axon. The axon itself is um, insulated in what we call myelin sheaths to help the action potential to go faster down. Action potentials can only travel down in a single direction, in one direction down the axon, and we'll talk about how that happens. So nerve and muscle tissue is, are both excitable tissue and they're capable of producing electrical signals when excited or stimulated. So any sort of stimulus, whether that's light coming from um, this computer screen into your eyes or whether that's stimulating the muscle to contract, both of these types of tissue are capable of producing an electrical signal when excited. A rapid and transient change occurs in the membrane potential of these cells. And the membrane potential refers to in the inside of the cell, right at the membrane, what happens in voltage as this signal gets passed. And we'll talk about what happens in that membrane voltage and we can graph it um, and learn the stages of an action potential curve. The neuron itself can conduct signals from one part of the body to another. So that signal, the action potential will travel down this axon and then we sent through the axon terminals um, to another neuron or a muscle cell, which we will pass the signal onto. The neuron has a high speed signal by the ability to generate and conduct an action potential down the entire length of its axon. And it can do that in one to two milliseconds. The muscle itself will act via contraction and it works a little bit differently that you guys will talk about, but contraction of a muscle also involves the passage of the electrical signal into the muscle fiber cells. Okay, so here's the action potential. It's graph, and again, an action potential is a rapid reversal of membrane potential due to changes in membrane permeability. And this involves what we call the all or none response. So this graph shows the membrane potential of the millivolts, just right on the inside of the cell membrane. So the inside of the axon at resting is normally negative 70 millivolts. When it gets stimulated, ion channels will open and sodium ions will rush into the cell. Sodium is a positively charged ion. So when sodium rushes into the cell, we get an upswing in the graph, it gets to be more positive because those sodium ions bring their positive charge into the cell. If these enough sodium channels open and enough sodium ions 
get past what we call threshold. So if they bring the membrane potential up to about negative 55, we have what we call an all or none response. Once it gets past that negative 55 millivolts, kind of right where my cursor is, all the sodium channels will open and we will generate an action potential peak uh, no matter what. So the generation of an action potential will either happen completely or not at all. And that is what we mean by we, when we say the all or none response. If enough sodium ions enter the cell to get the cell past threshold, which is negative 55, we will generate an action potential peak. So this is the start of the action potential. The repolarizing phase signifies the time when all the sodium channels close and potassium channels open. So during repolarization of the axon, potassium channels open and potassium, channel, potassium ions, which are also positively charged, will exit the cell. So they will travel out of the axon. Since they are positively charged ions leaving the axon, when they leave, they will bring the inside of the axon or the inside of the cell will become more negative again. And that's what's happening in repolarization. The potassium channels remain open a little bit longer or they don't all close as quickly as they should. So too many potassium ions leave and we have this little dip in the curve where it's a little extra negative. And this is called a hyperpolarization state. Um, and to get back up to normal resting potential, we have what we call the sodium potassium pump, which is an active process requiring ATP, which pumps two potassium in for every three sodium it pumps out to try to reestablish this normal resting potential um, of the membrane. So here are the steps of an action potential, and you guys should fill this out as we're going through it. And feel free to pause the video at any time again as you're filling it out if you need to. So step one is the resting state. Again, no channels are open at this point and the axon is resting at negative 70 millivolts. So this is before any sort of stimulus is being applied to the axon. Once we get a stimulus being applied, if that stimulus opens enough sodium channels to pass threshold, we get an all or none response and all sodium channels open, sodium ions rush into the cell during the depolarization phase. So the cell is being depolarized and we will get an action potential peak, an all or none response no matter what. Right at the top of that action potential peak, um, this, right after this peak, all the sodium channels will close and they remain closed for about one to two milliseconds. And because they remain closed, this causes your action potential to only travel in one direction down the axon. Because the sodium channels remain closed for one to two milliseconds, they will not go back. The action potential will not go backwards the way it came from. It has to continue on down the axon in only one direction. And this makes um, the electrical emission or signaling in transmission of a signal extremely effective and efficient in your nervous system because your action potentials are moving in only one direction. Then during the repolarization phase, all sodium channels close and potassium channels will open at this point. So potassium channels open and potassium exits the cell. It's a positively charged ion. So when positive charges leave the cell, we begin to get more negative again. Hyperpolarization is when those potassium channels remain open and too many of them leave. So we get this hyperpolarization phase. To get the cell back up to the resting state, we have to use our sodium potassium pump, which will transport two potassium ions into the cell for every three sodium it pumps out of the cell and that will bring us back to resting. I include this graph just as another way to show the different stages. This includes that threshold on it, and this shows failed initiations or failed stimuli that failed to bring this neuron to an action potential peak. However, this stimulus was enough to get the uh, membrane potential past threshold, so we have generated an action potential peak through depolarization, um, the influx of sodium ions, then repolarization, the exiting of potassium ions. The refractory period shows this negative state. Um, and then the resting state is created back again with the sodium potassium pump. This shows the different steps of an action potential and the generation or the millivoltage, the membrane. 
and it's showing what's happening to the channels with the resting state. Everything is closed, depolarizing, sodium ions enter through sodium channels, repolarizing, potassium leave through potassium voltage-gated channels, and then the long-term active transport, this is your sodium-potassium pump, two potassium in for three sodium out to reestablish the resting membrane potential. So these are the three um, channels that are being used to get this axon or neuron through an action potential. So what do a puffer fish and a black mamba fish have in common? And you'll answer one of these questions on your application questions as you fill out the packet. Uh, both can be lethal and both act to be an action potential. Um, the toxin in the pufferfish is tetrodotoxin, and that prevents your sodium channel from opening when threshold is reached, inhibiting muscle contraction and causing your heart to stop beating. And dendrodotoxin, if you're ever bit by a black mamba snake, that will block potassium channels, preventing repolarization of nerve and muscle cells, prolonging the duration of action potentials, which will eventually result in muscle convulsions, paralysis, and death. So both act via some sort of blockage of a channel in that action potential curve that we talked about. And that's it for this slideshow. I hope we see you guys in a Zoom session soon. Take care.